Well, welcome everyone. I think we'll make a start. I want to be conscious of the time because uh, for some of our guests here tonight, who'll be sharing with you, it is uh, a lot later than it is for most of us. It's uh, already 1 p.m. in Beirut and we have some... 1 a.m. Sorry, 1 a.m. Yes, not 1 p.m. And uh, I'll make sure that we uh, get them to bed at some reasonable hour. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, really excited to uh, share some stories and things today. We've got uh, Tony uh, Caddy from uh, Lebanon and uh, Ziad, and we're hoping that Imad will be joining too, and they'll be sharing a little on what's happening in Lebanon, uh, sharing a little about their different ministries, a bit of background from where they're from, and uh, yeah. And then there'll be a time for questions and a little feedback and time to pray together uh, toward the end. So yeah, thanks once again for joining, and uh, let's, Noah, would you mind opening up in prayer for us? Sure. Thanks, brother. Well, Lord God, um, we just want to praise you as uh, the author of all creation, Lord, uh, the glory of glories, Lord. Uh, we give to you all power and honor and love, Lord. Um, we pray that this time that we have together would bless you um, as it has blessed so many uh, in Lebanon to be ministered to as many are hearing the gospel and even in difficult times uh, as the country is in, in really difficult straits, Lord, we thank you that uh, you are on the move and that you have touched, touched the hearts of many and you have inspired your servants uh, to reach out um, just with uh, enthusiasm and with confidence that your word has the power to save, Lord, and that you are Lord who can who is not restrained to save by many or by few. So. We just ask that uh, in this time, you would help us all to praise you and to get to know your works in Lebanon, that you would help us to connect and really just uh, that your spirit would be among us. So as we are gathered here, we pray that you are here with us and just thank you for the time we get to, to hear about these amazing works. Um, so we praise you and ask for a blessing on this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Great. Thanks, Noah. Yeah. As, as, we, uh, as we shared earlier, this is really a chance for uh, us to get to know some of our field staff there in Lebanon, and they're going to be sharing some of their stories and some of what God is doing. Uh, very exciting stuff. So I think we'll jump straight into it. Um, one thing I will say is that this is a very conversational experience. We'll have a specific time for question and answers at the end, though. So uh, you know, don't be afraid to jump in. And, but let, uh, to start with, we'll, we'll let these guys uh give you some updates on what's happening and uh yeah you can you can jump in at the end with any questions you have but you know, we invite you to, invite to ask any questions you have uh, once these guys are done sharing so so uh i think we have tony and ziad with us i uh looks like that has not been able to join us yet maybe hopefully he'll be able to join us part way but without further ado let me uh let me introduce you to ziad and tony and uh, Ziad, why don't we start with you? Why don't you uh, introduce yourself and say hi? Tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's happening. Hi. Um, my name is Ziad al and I've been working with Horizons International as a, a training and partnership facilitator. I'm working both with the U.S. office and Lebanon. I'm from Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, I'm a husband and a father of five kids. I can show you my family uh, if Dan would show the picture. Uh, I was born in 1975. This is the time that the Civil War started in Lebanon. This is my family. This is my wife, Katie. And I have four girls and one boy. The twin girls, the eldest are Eva and Leila. And this is Maya. And then Jabran is the boy, and the youngest is Joel. So this is my family. Uh, I've been working in education for years. Uh, we started a church in Beirut uh, in 2006 with other families. The church has been growing, and I've been supporting myself with my work in education until two years ago when uh, Lebanon uh, went downhill with everything and uh, 
I've been wanting to work more for the ministry, but I wasn't able uh, to. And by joining uh, Horizons, uh, I'm able to do my church ministry and I'm able to learn and train and teach with uh, Horizons. This has been a great asset. Also, Horizons has been helping our church uh, with our outreach ministry and compassion ministry by doing food parcels and reaching out, especially in the last uh, two years. I'll show you a picture of our church uh, in Beirut. If Dan would show that. So this is our small church, small family in Beirut. Uh, and uh, we're happy to uh, to work with uh, Horizons. We work together, church uh, and uh, Horizons, with this great outreach that we've been doing. Praise God for that. So I'm working with Horizons, especially in the Middle East Center, uh, in the uh, one of the meetings, one of the cohorts called Proclaim, and this is where we train uh, uh, church members. They come and join this meeting, and we train them in evangelism. Uh, one of the courses that we give is Engaging Islam. We train them on how to reach their uh, Muslim neighbors and friends and co-workers. Uh, I'm also in another cohort called uh, MEC Care, and this is a counseling class. And Many people have been training uh, and learning from Lebanon, from Jordan, Morocco, and other countries, other surrounding countries. So uh, I've been I've been giving um, my time to the church and to Horizons at the same time, and this is working uh, very well. Uh, I don't need to invest my time outside because Horizons is allowing me to do my church ministry and at the same time, uh, be able to reach this, you know, uh, this great vision that Horizons has, the kingdom, something way beyond our small churches in our small towns. So praise God for that. If you have any questions for me, please go ahead. So, uh, Ziad, I was wondering if you could share a little bit. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Zay Am I pronouncing it right, Zaid? Ziad. Ziad. I'm sorry. Ziad. Um, I have been to Lebanon and Beirut uh, on ministry before the explosion and before what's happening now. So I cannot imagine what you're going through. Uh, and... Uh, we are praying and we are giving here in America. So thank you for your work. I, I love the Lebanese people. So I, what I'd like to ask you is um, the food shortages. How, what, how critical is it? What's happening? Did, is there anything coming in from, we hear all kinds of stories of, from grain coming in from, I guess, Russia or um, uh, no, 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 not, coming. not coming in or you where you're yeah go ahead keith uh, because of the war um they say that uh ukraine and uh, russia produce about 29 percent of the world's uh, grain export and a large part comes to lebanon i just want to know if you've had any problems with food shortages there as a result of the worldwide situation um, I think we've had this problem way before the Ukraine and Russia issue. So uh, th th there's nothing that they could have added. Um, it all started three years ago. I mean, you know, you've heard about the issue with the dollar. Lebanon depends on the dollar currency and everything is in dollar. Now, just two years ago, the dollar was... 1500 lira that's our currency 1500 and it it was like that for the past 20 years and now in two years it jumped from 1500 lira now it's 30,000 wow. oh. <laughs> so oh. you can see the difference and we have four different exchange rates in Lebanon for the dollar but the real one that counts is the black market is the highest now okay. the government 
the government says no the you know the they say the the dollar rate should be 1500 the banks say no the rate is 8000 and then there's another exchange and then the real one that counts when you go to buy your food is the black market one which is okay. the 30000 one so mm -hmm. we've had this this issue before but actually I mean, I, I know how difficult it is on everybody, but that had opened hope that had opened a great door for us because many, many doors that we used to knock on, you know, they wouldn't open before because in Lebanon, as a, as an evangelical community, we're a small minority. We're less than one percent. And most of the times we're confused with JWs or, you know, because uh I mean, I come from a Catholic background, and this is the background. So Lebanon is now more than 80% Muslim, and the rest is different Christian sects, the biggest one, the Greek Orthodox and the Catholic. So before, uh, they would not receive us. Now, you know, because of what happened, you know, uh, I mean, God is softening the hearts of people because of the need. So now when we go with a food parcel, it's an open door for us to go in and to sit and to share for an hour or two. So I mean, trying to see the silver lining here, I know, <laughs> but uh, it opened up doors. I mean, I know with everything that's happening in Lebanon, even with the explosion, I'm not saying that was a good thing, but um, God knows what he's doing. God opened doors for us for outreach. Um. Yeah, if I if I might add a, a little bit of uh, to the what you said there, Ziad. Um, yeah, it, traditionally, like the Syrian refugees in Lebanon have been very open to receiving help, but the uh, the actual Lebanese community uh, has been more closed off, is what I've understood. And so, like this has really allowed us to reach more Lebanese nationals um, because of, of the shortages and the difficulties. Definitely, yeah. Just Ken I have a quick question. I just found out today, a couple hours ago, that water has been cut off in Beirut. There is no water. Is that true? Um, well, we don't notice these things because we we don't depend on anything from the government. In Lebanon, everything is privatized. So, like today, we got one hour of electricity from the government in twenty four. But we depend on generators, private generators. So, and these, and same with water. Uh, there's always water shortage, but we we buy water tanks. Uh, so uh, that might that that is always true of water shortage in Beirut. It's always true, but it depends on which area and what's happening. Thank you. Yeah, I was. Um... I'm excited to hear more. Uh, at this point, I think it'd be great to introduce Tony as well. And then I have some questions. I have at least a question for both of you. Uh, and Emad, if he manages to join us. Uh, if not, and, and then, of course, uh, you know, any other questions too. But Tony, why don't you introduce yourself and join in the conversation too? Sure, sure. Well, my name, my name is Tony uh, Kadi. And I was born and raised uh, in Lebanon until the age of 19. Uh, then I went to the state and I studied architecture. Um, I became citizen and uh, in, 20, in the 2000, actually, I took my wife, I got married and we went to the state and we lived there uh, up to the 2015. Uh, and I, I had my own office and firm and then my parents got sick. During that time, four years before I moved here, uh, I joined the Bible Study Fellowship International. Uh, and I was trained uh, to be a children uh, leader for three years. Uh, I don't know what God, why God wanted to do that at that time, uh, till we decided to move to Lebanon. And uh, my wife moved before me, like a year before me, and she became a teacher in one of the evangelical schools. So she, uh, that principal saw me when I moved here, talking to my English, fluently in English, and uh, to my children in English, and also. Uh, speaking the word of God with them, especially. Uh, so she asked me to join in her school and I, I didn't have any idea how to be a, a school principal or even a counselor, but God allowed me. I got trained there for five years. But during that time, I became a counselor in the school 
uh, and the spiritual leader to so many children. And I realized that God is guiding me into children ministry. Uh, we moved to a town uh, called Duar. It's in the mountains of Lebanon. It's a beautiful area. Uh, and actually, there is a sign here, the only, the only sign in Lebanon that says evangelical town. I have no idea why. It has an old history. So when I first saw it, I'm like, yes, we're going to live here. So uh, God bless us with an amazing home, with a backyard. And uh, so uh, I started seeing so many children on a, on, on a street just everywhere here and there and uh, uh, I went to the city manager and I told him hey you know there's so many children that we why are they on the street they're not doing anything they have no activities in the summer and he's like well come up with an idea and we'll we'll help you out so uh, we gathered 25 kids and my son started teaching them basketball for an hour and a half twice a week uh, the first hour and 15 minutes uh, we teach them basketball and then the other 15 minutes I sit down with them and teach them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, their background is Syrian Muslims and they're Christians, um, a Catholic uh, or Orthodox. Uh, so it was amazing. We, but to be honest with you, the parents did not like that. They did not like the idea that they're sending their children to have fun, but now those evangelical people are coming and they're taking our kids away from our churches they didn't like that believe me i had so many battles i i i got calls i got complaint but at the end of the summer uh truly i um i introduced i got introduced to horizons through a friend of mine his name is homer uh he's an american citizen living for, for the last 40 years in in Lebanon. he knows Lebanon more than me uh, and uh, he's like, why don't you talk to Horizon, see if they can help you out with any events or anything. So I talked uh, to Pierre and uh, he came over with his wife to my house and we had a great talk, beautiful family. And I told him, hey, I have this in my heart. I would love to create an event for those children. Can we do that? He's like, well, tell me a little bit about what you do here. I told him, hey, we started 30 kids playing basketball. Now we're 80. So and all town know us and we're, we're having a blessed time with them. Uh, he's like, yeah, well, let's, let's help you out. Talk to your church. I talked to my church. Uh, they offered food and so many other things and Horizons offered so many things. And here in event, to be honest with you, we started, uh, my wife and I going around, uh, the land where we had the event and we started praying Lord, you know, we have no idea why you moved us to this town where it says evangelical town, but you brought us to those children you brought us uh, in the midst of people. They want to argue with us, but they still love us. They want. They know that we're serving their children, but they're kind of. I don't know. They don't want. They don't want their kids to be evangelical, and uh, so uh, it was a blessing. Truly, uh, Pierre helped us out. The church. I joined Horizon. Since then, I we we invited. To, we sent actually out two hundred tickets, and we had two hundred and fifty two child showed up with their parents. Uh, we had uh, worship time. We had pizza. We got pizza for 200 kids. I have no idea how the 252 kids with their parents ate pizza. And they're huge pizza. It's like Costco. I remember the big Costco pizza. And uh, not only this, it's just like uh, we have Samaritan Purse help us out. We asked them to bring 250 bucks, you know, those red box Samaritan Purse. And uh, they brought 230 and then we realized there's 270 in the trunk extra. I mean, for the total. So all kids got toys, got food. We had an amazing time. And since that time, I've been following up with their parents, uh, meeting those kids on the street. Hey, I'm with Tony. It means Uncle Tony. And so they know us by name. It's just amazing. And uh, then I started uh, bringing them a food portion to their poor parents. Uh, and we started uh, mingling more with people around the area. Uh, truly, they hated us because we are the only kind of evangelical family that is active in this area. And now uh, we know so many people and God is opening us a door. I'm sorry I went backward, but I'd love to introduce you a little bit to my family. Let me see if I know how to do that. Normally, my uh, my 13 years old daughter, she's a pro in uh here, let's, let me see. I think I can do that. Okay. Well, let's talk. I want to share with you a little bit about uh, my experience in Lebanon. It is not a fun experience in the beginning, but I'm getting used to it. Moving from living in California, Ventura County for 15 years, I have my own office, two-story home, 
uh, living a happy life, you know, going to so many town. But God brought us here uh, where uh, the economy crisis just next week I came to Lebanon. It just came with me, truly. Everybody here, can you go back to the state because you're annoying us? <laughs> you brought the crisis to Lebanon. Um, we have food crisis. Yes, we do. Uh, people are starving. People are listening more to us. They want food. Uh, we used to go to a Syrian person and hand him food. He used to say, great, thank you. Lebanese, no, we're fine, even though he's starving. But he, but now everybody's taking food. Even, even the wealthiest people in Lebanon, they feel like, what if something happened tomorrow? Let me store some food. And they want to hear us. They want to hear the word of God. We have a shortage of medication, amazing shortage of medication. Can you imagine you have diabetes? You go to the pharmacy, you cannot find your medication. And you start going to seven or eight pharmacy around you. I go to Beirut. I go to store inside. I drive for two hours to find my parents' medication. So, and not only this, the medication prices jump from let's say two dollars to thirty or forty dollars. And comparing one dollar value used to be equal to fifteen hundred lira. Now one dollar equal to almost thirty thousand lira. Imagine the difference. So. Uh, uh, thanks God, Horizons are helping us out right now with medication. Uh, also, we are uh, offering the city manager that he is a heart doctor. He has a clinic uh, in, uh, in in Duwar area. Uh, we brought him a box. Let me let me share with you very shortly about this box that came in. Um, uh, the, the the doctor came to me. He's like Tony. You know, we have this clinic and we don't have medication left. We're gonna end up closing it. Uh, do you have a way of getting us medication from the state? I told him, I have no idea. Let me talk to someone. So I talked to someone in Horizon. I told him, hey, you know, we might need some medication if it's possible. He's like, Tony, we don't normally do that, but let me see. I have a box here, some medication, and if you want, take it. So I brought this box. It's probably, I would say, uh, in inches and feet. It's probably like around two feet by two feet. So I brought it and I put it in front of the doctor. The doctor started crying truly. This medication it was all the medication that is not in the market. And it's so in need. How did this box get to Horizon? How did this box, God used me to bring it from Horizons to the doctor? It's just a miracle too. So God is using us. Uh, we ask you to pray, continue praying for us. Um, as God is guiding us to, um, to do more work here. It's not fun. Last year, I had to wait uh, almost four years uh, in um, a line to get gas in my car to be able to go distribute those invitation uh, cards because there's no gas. There's uh, right now there's shortage of uh, bread of um, uh, of pita bread, which is one of the main things on the table here. Um, again, uh, this is my family: uh, Rania, my wife, my 13 years old daughter. And this is Alex. Can you imagine a 13 years old son is taking a picture with his dad? It's not easy, right? Uh, and this is truly after Beirut bombing. My parents live in Beirut. Um, I'm not sure if I have any of those pictures uh, that shows my parents' house. It was all destroyed. Uh, it was like an open space. Uh, and uh, this is some of the pictures of Beirut of the explosion. Uh, Tony. Yeah. If I can interject, uh, we're not seeing like in we're not seeing individual photos. It's more like um, it, we're seeing like the window with all of the spreadsheet, with all oh, of the slides. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me see, let me see. Let me find a way of doing that. Hold on. Yeah, uh, there we see. go. Is that yeah. better? Okay. Yes. How's that? Okay. So those are some of the pictures after the explosion in Beirut. Um, and we talked about the crisis in Lebanon, medication and food. Uh, this is the event that we had last year. We had 250 kids. Uh, it was plenty of kids. I've never seen this much kids in all my life, even in school that I was working at. Um, we had a worship night, and uh, those are some of the bags that we normally take to different homes uh, in, in the war area. Uh, this is uh, this is when I worked in the school. The children, I had an amazing time with them, and i still in contact with them. Uh, this is uh, at church, uh, my youth uh, children. And this is the basketball team that Alex uh, used to teach. And this is my story. Uh, so um, let me see how can I stop sharing screen here. 
I know how to do that. Oh, stop sharing. Okay. So uh, sorry, I want to. I spoke too much, but there's so many things to tell. Truly, I, I mean, we. I grew up spiritually incredibly because uh, I realized how God has been using Horizon, how God's been using that through Horizons, and, and using my talent as an architect. Right now, we're remodeling one of the uh, showroom uh, very soon. Um, we're going to be using so god is using the architectural talent that i have he's using my music talent he's using uh i love children's using that so that's my story if you have any questions i'd love to hear it can we ask a question of course Go ahead. question tony yeah yes. um sports ministry is my area uh, what I work in, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Christian Sports and Recreation Ministry Summit, CRSM. I have, I do billiards and I network with uh, basketball teams and soccer teams. Okay. I'd like to know how that's going with the devastation and all the challenges. Uh, are they, are the young people finding relief in sports and are you able to use that yes. uh, to share yes. the gospel? Yes, because really children, you know, after COVID, uh, all of those children have been staying home, studying through Zoom. They're not connecting with other children. And that summer, last summer, was kind of almost the end of it, even though I went to the hospital after that. But um, the children needed that, that uh, basketball uh, gathering. And it was more fun than really just playing. It's just uh, um, joking, playing, encouraging uh, and those 15 minutes that at the end of the hour and a half that we spent with them, uh, it brought them together. And the way how we started first is by, uh, by the Ten Commandments. Uh, how can we apply the First Commandment, the Second Commandment, the Third Commandment in your life? They've been sharing it with their parents and they come home full of joy. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a, it did a great work uh, with the children of basketball. And we're going to be doing this this year too again, so next month. Uh, Tony, I I missed the introduction, but are you Lebanese? I am. I was born and raised till the age of nineteen uh, in Lebanon. Then I went to the state. I studied. I moved here for another year. I got married and moved with my wife to the state. And we've been here six years now. So you're. Um, just as fluent. You're probably even more fluent in Arabic than in English. But I'm yes. obviously. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. When I left the, when I left Lebanon, I knew some French, but now I, I barely can understand it. So I'd like to if I might. Um yeah, Tony, this is so exciting. Um I I was in Lebanon years and years ago. Um, it's very interesting, even how I got on today. Mm -hmm. I was looking at my mail, and I, I found this. Sorry, I guess you can't see it. I, I found this um, this uh, on the horizon thing in my mailbox. I don't even know how I got connected with all of you, but I'm so excited. And, and, and so it was. I opened it just as you guys were starting. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to try this and see. Wow. So, um, well, that has a reason I lived for you in Septier, um, uh, in Lebanon and in Beirut. And uh, I was there uh, for all my growing up years, actually. Oh, so it's, it's such a pleasure to get connected. Um, and I was wondering, is, is it really hard to get food? Like, how do you get it? Personally, do you have? I mean, there's spend a lot more. The market's still open. Everything is still open. Oh, good. It's just it's expensive to buy anything. Like for example, we if you're inviting, let's we used to invite people over for barbecue, mm -hmm. like barbecue meat, for example. Mm -hmm. The meat used to be fourteen thousand lira for a kilo. Now the meat is three hundred thousand lira. Mm -hmm. So if your income isn't Lebanese, your income would be probably two million lira. Mm -hmm. So four times you yeah. need in your income is over. Yeah. So it is, it is wow. I'm just giving you a small example. I mean, a chocolate yeah. minimum, 
I mean, now, I, if I want to treat my wife, I used to take her to a sweet place, like an Italian sweet place. We used to spend like 20,000 lira in everything. Now, if you want to buy a, a chocolate, you spend 40,000 lira for a chocolate. So my treat for my wife is a chocolate. <laughs> hey, honey, I'm going to take you for a chocolate. <laughs> wow. Um, if, if a person wants to send you stuff, do we do it through Horizon or... It's, it's through horizon. It's through horizon. I actually right. have, yeah, I ha, I'm I'm related through marriage um, mm -hmm. uh, to a man who is in this medical field, and he could probably yes. get me supplies. Oh, perfect! How perfect. would I get them over to you? Uh, I guess uh, I think uh, Dan, can you help us with that? Or um, I can actually jump in here. Sorry, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so um, the easiest way to do that is actually to um, send it to one of our U.S. based uh, offices, oh, and mm -hmm. we have people that make trips to Lebanon. George is in Lebanon, mm -hmm. right? The president of our ministry. He's in. He just went to Lebanon, so um, we have plenty of people that make trips, uh, and so they bring it over. Um, Last time, I think George brought like three suitcases full of medicine and stuff like that. Well, that's yeah. how you do it. You take it yeah. in through suitcases. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, it seemed like they opened your mail and they would charge things. I don't know if it's like that now. Yeah. But well, that's awesome. I, Thank you for I have a check here. Sure. So Tony and Ziad, Keith Kuhn. Um, yeah. I just actually got back from Lebanon in April. I was there for a month. I've been to Lebanon four times working in Seward. Um, and basically for everybody to know, like <clears throat> to get things into Lebanon, you have to be like a mule. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you do here. Way for them to get cash is if we bring in fresh dollars. Yep. The only way for them to get supplies is if we actually bring it in suitcases. Yep. That's right. And typically I, I've had good luck with TSA and stuff. Nobody's ever taken my stuff. Um, I've brought plenty of medical supplies, plenty of uh, baby formula, baby food, vitamins, all that kind of stuff down to sewer, and yeah. I've had no issues with it. Um, yeah. great. Jason, great. you mentioned the Tyre. I used to be the school principal the, of the evangelical school in Tyre for five years. Do you know the Yamut family? Yes. Okay. Okay, now I know the connection. His yep. wife used to his wife used to teach in in our school when I was the principal there. Okay, and Miss Hanan, yeah, she's great. Yes, okay, yeah. Tony, yes. I have a question. Sure. Do you teach English at your um, at this school? At the schools there? Uh, you know, it started last year. I've never told that. I actually have teaching Arabic, but I did not teach English. Uh, I would love to. But uh, it's just uh, so many things uh, that I'm working on right now that it might take more of my time. Uh, and I don't think I will be able to do that. But a friend of mine moved from Camarillo as a, for a visit here, and uh, I had to teach him some Arabic. <laughs> uh -huh. Mar Marla, any chance you are related to Dr. Ken Bailey? No, this is my married name. Okay. <laughs> Parents Thank Lathrop. Their Thank last you. name is Lathrop. Oh. Um, um, I, were you going to say something, Marla? Uh, well, I was going to ask these children, they're not refugee children. They're just kids in the neighborhood. Yes, kids in the neighborhood. They're mixed okay. Lebanese and Syrian. Mm -hmm. um, one question I have for... Uh, both Tony and Ziad, um, I'm curious, you know, one question, I, I, I work at Horizons, and one question that we get very often, um, emails and calls and stuff like that, is how how can American churches help uh, with what is happening in Lebanon? What is the role that you hope that American churches would play in, in coming alongside Lebanese churches? Oh, well, there's so much need, truly, in, in all ways. I mean, medication, you know, there's no cancer medication in Lebanon right now. Uh, the, the cancer medication at cost in Lebanon 
uh, I have no idea how it's cheaper than the state, but it's $800. And I know in the state is around $3,000. Uh, I have no idea how people are surviving or how many people we lost just because they couldn't find medication. Some people, they travel to Turkey or to Egypt to get them those medication. So, so if, if the churches want to help, if the states want to help the churches here in Lebanon, uh, mainly, mainly is uh, financial support to be able to buy medication or medication themselves, uh, because medication is priority right now. Um, as a church pastor, I would say um, helping, I mean, uh, helping and supporting Horizons International is helping the Lebanese people and helping our churches because Horizons is working with uh, more than 120 churches here in Lebanon, providing uh, medicine, providing food parcels, uh, even providing some equipment that we need for recording or for broadcasting. So Horizons is, uh, is working with all the churches in Lebanon across all denominations. So supporting Horizons International is helping us as pastors and as uh, outreach ministries. Mm. Another thing that would be very helpful is for people who, who are able to and would like to come and help there's, there's always need for that, uh, whether it's short term or long term. And Horizons also has a way of helping by uh, giving orientations, helping people uh, adjust here, short term on a visit uh, visa, long term on, um, uh, uh, you know, residency and stuff like that. So Horizons has been doing that for a long time. And it's always helpful. People here are encouraged when they see, uh, you know, church members, when they see workers, whether it's in sports or teaching or anything. People are encouraged here to see, um, you know, others coming from the West, especially that everyone is leaving Lebanon. So when they see others coming, that's really encouraging for those who are here. Even I have us. a question about. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you, Tony. Um, yeah, I, when I was there three years ago, um, I, we went to a Palestinian uh, camp and we went to a Syrian camp. What has happened in the last three years with the refugee camps and that situation? I mean, if the Lebanese people are struggling as bad as you know what we're hearing now. I can't imagine what's going on in the camps because I, I, they have a, such large population of refugees there. What's going on there? Yeah, uh, my experience, uh, Ziad. Sorry, if I'm, I didn't mean to intrude, but I, I think I think that what's happening right now in Lebanon is because of having and supporting so many people coming to Lebanon, like the Palestinians and the Syrian. And with all the economy, uh, unfortunately, some some Lebanese people they start having bitterness toward the Syrian and the Palestinian being here just because they can barely support themselves as Lebanese. And now we have to be able to feed uh, other people that they can't really go back to their country, and their country is stable right now. Uh, and, but I believe that um, I believe that the refugees that they're in Lebanon right now they've been getting some support and help from the United Nation more than Lebanese, truly. Um, a lot of uh, Syrian families that I know, they've been receiving a $200 income through a credit card. Uh, but the Lebanese people that they have their millions of dollars in the bank, they can't even get a dollar out of their banks these days. This is true, this is what's really happening. Uh, the bank system in Lebanon, they took all people's money and they're barely giving them 1% uh, from what they, they can take. So uh, in, my, in my point of view, uh, I am supporting so many Syrian families in the area here with the food and stuff, but I have a feeling that the Lebanese right now, they need more help because the Syrian, they've been getting the help they need. Yeah, plus there's the UNHCR and the UNRWA 
And those uh, those NGOs, they've been helping Palestinian and other refugees in Lebanon for a long time. But now the crisis is with the <laughs> Lebanese. So uh, this is very strange in the history of Lebanon, but the yeah. Lebanese are in worse condition than refugees. So Lebanese are refugees in their own country now. Yeah. Unfortunately. Quick question. What is the benzene situation for transportation? The last I heard, you were hardly could get anything in your gas tank to drive. Right. Brothers, yet you want to go ahead? Um, there was uh, there was shortage for a long period of time. I myself was in one of the lines one time from 8, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. <laughs> just to put <laughs> some gas in the car. So Gosh. you would spend your day. And and then they solved that shortage by making it very, very expensive. True. So um, I can't even imagine, I can't even do the math. I can't say eight times or, I mean, I know how expensive uh, gas is in the US now, but it's, it's unbelievable how expensive. So they made it available by, make it, by making it so expensive. Yeah. yeah. That's how it is now. Not only this, I mean, truly, if you think about it, like my wife, she's a teacher, English teacher. She goes to Beirut every day. So she needs, she needs, she, her income is 2 million lira, which is, it used to be $1,200, but the dollar's difference right now, her income a month is $70. She put gas $120 a month to go to work. Mm-hmm. And just, just because her, our children is, goes to school for free. So that she spent almost fifty dollars extra on top of her income just to get to work, and uh, again last summer we used to spend. I was uh, with COVID for a month in the hospital, and my wife used to spend four hours in a gas station fill up gas so she can go and visit me at the hospital. And sometimes she can't go to the hospital because there's no gas. So this is how hard it is. Yeah, Can I say Sorry. So like um, the same thing with the uh, government employees. So you go to do something, you know, in the government in one of the offices. And usually there should be in that office uh, five to 10 people and you find one or two. And many of them come twice a week while they should come all week. And no one can tell them anything because Absolutely. their salary does not support their transportation. So <laughs> they're not coming. So it feels like a whole government, a whole country is just collapsing and no one can say anything. Sorry well, to interrupt. Well, I know in, in Seward, a lot of the uh, public school teachers basically quit going to work because they couldn't afford to drive to work. Yep. So that then that means the kids aren't even actually going to school right now mm-hmm. because That's teachers specific. aren't. Yep. Yeah, if I can... Yeah, this is barely like I would say like ten uh, percent of what truly uh, we go through here. I remember you asked a question about water shortage, like where we live right now in the mountains. Uh, we paid for our yearly water, let's say almost like five hundred dollars water a year, but because the water doesn't come to my town, I call someone to bring me water, almost five hundred thousand lira a week, so almost two million lira a month just to to flush the toilet, excuse uh, the words, it's just uh, insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, I mean, the, the, the incredible sound that I hear, and I, 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 for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Dan, I work for uh, Horizons too. So I, I have the privilege of reporting on so many amazing stories that come out of Lebanon. And one of the things that strikes me is, you know, uh, just the immense challenge that uh, p- people here can't, I, I, I myself can't even really connect to on a personal level. And yet you guys are in the thick of it. And, and in the midst of all of this, God is just doing incredible things. Like, you know, 250 children turning up, like these partnerships and training people for the gospel and, and this spiritual openness. So um, I've got to say on a personal level, I'm so excited uh, and I have the best job in the world. I get to hear this all the time. So it's, it's wonderful. I get to report on this. But um, but tell me, you know, um, what does it look like going forward? You know, obviously some good things are happening, but 
Uh, what are you excited about in the midst of these challenges? What is, what is God bringing in the future? What do you see? You start, brothers, you have the good news. <laughs> yeah, uh, just like I mentioned before, we have an open door now. We have an open door. People who are hard-hearted before, now they're receiving us way more than uh, they did before. Um, I'm sorry to say that, but the Lebanese have been very proud, very proud people. And, uh, and now this is changing. Now this is changing. Um, they don't have that pride to hang on to anymore. So, you know, uh, I think God is softening the hearts and, you know, breaking that pride which stood between, uh, between them and receiving the gospel. And it's amazing what need, what great need can do to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really, I really enjoy, uh, I mean, it's not like I enjoy pe seeing people suffering, but I really enjoy seeing how uh, the people that they have this high ego, they're going down and they're asking for help because yeah. it's hard for a Lebanese to ask for help. Lebanese are normally, uh, even though if they're barely making like, let's say $500 a month, their expenses a month is like a thousand dollars because they want to live beyond their limit. But with, with all what's going on right now, they're really asking for help. And when they ask for help, it is not easy for the Lebanese to see that happening. Um, you also can pray for the seniors of Lebanon. My heart is because I see my parents. My dad is 85 years old. He used to go buy the tomato for like three, 4,000 lira. Now he's going out and he's seeing the price of tomato for 50,000 lira. He's not ex expecting it. He's like, I can't buy tomato. I can't, I can't buy ketchup. I can't buy. And his house was full of food. I go to his house right now. His refrigerator is empty. So seeing my dad going through this and my dad is doing okay financially comparing to other people. I mean, uh, it, believe me, it's a heartbroken to see seniors. They can't buy their medication. I heard a guy yesterday, he shared with me this. I, I really want to share it with you if you don't mind. Uh, you know, uh, he went to the pharmacy to buy his dad medication and he saw a lady there. She had 14,000 lira in her pocket. And she asked for her diabetes medication and she gave the 14,000 lira for, to buy the medication. And the pharmacist told her, this medication is 300,000 lira right now. It's not 14,000 lira. She's like, I need the medication. What am I going to do? She's like, well, I don't know. So this guy, he went and he pulled money from his pocket and he paid for her medication. This is a small example of what's really happening to the senior of Lebanon. And we're talking about seniors that they're very well educated, seniors that they raise their children, but unfortunately their children, they can barely support their children. So they're leaving their parents uh, and it's not easy. I have a question. Are there any threats from outside of Lebanon that like countries that might want to take advantage of this and come in and I don't know, political coup take over or whatever, they seem to be very vulnerable. So anything like that in, in the region? Mm, there's a lot of talk about that, but I'm not sure we're supposed to share details. <laughs> we're, you know, it, it's, a con it's always a concern in Lebanon, uh, whether we can share details uh, online. I'm sorry, I'm not saying that I don't trust any of you or all of you, but it's, um, you know, it's a big deal here. Uh, just, you know, we don't have the freedom of sharing, you know, so you can end up in jail or, you know, under investigation for sharing anything. Yes, we do have these threats. You're t what you're saying is real. Uh, it's just, I don't have the freedom <laughs> to say it. I'm sorry. So there was, there's, there's a, a website called the 961.com that actually is really good uh, for Lebanese news. And there was a story on there the other day or so about your question. 
Thank you, Jason. Yeah, pray, you. pray for Lebanon in all ways. I mean, because uh, there is a uh, so many people. It's it's a beautiful country. It is really a beautiful country. The greenery, the 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 water, that everything is just like. Uh, can you imagine? I had one meter of snow in my backyard, and I turn my uh, faucet on. I don't have water in my faucet. This is how weird it is. This is how weird. I mean, this country is treating us. That there are so many good things in it that we cannot take advantage of it and uh, we cannot enjoy it so um, but for ministry to be honest with you god is doing an amazing work uh, even even the refugees children uh, where i live right now there's a lot of farming so there is a lot of uh, syrian refugees you see a lot of children going i used to drive to um, a supermarket where all the children uh, Syrian, uh, they work at the supermarket there to help out with people to carry the stuff to their car so they can get some tips. So I normally go there when they close around nine o'clock and all of those children, they need to ride home. So I had a, uh, I have a big car. So I fit almost like nine kids in my car. So on the way back, I put worship songs for children and those children, they start worshiping. And can you imagine a Muslim child singing for Jesus? So it's what well, this is one of the experience that we've been having here. Sorry, I talk too much. At least that's what my wife tells me. <laughs> but talking about the work of God's a good thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Samuel. He asks, how is the Muslim world responding to these crises? No support, zero support, zero help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And instead, actually, they're uh they're saying oh well you need to get this group of people out of the country then we'll support you it's like uh going to politics instead of going to support or help we ask for food and they ask us to take a big group of people out of the country like we can't do that we want food i have another question for tony and ziad there was a the, they had a parliamentary elections just recently, and I know they were looking for a lot of change and all that kind of stuff. How's the, what's the, the feeling on the ground about the new elections? Uh, the same people. I, I personally don't see any change. <laughs> same people. It's just the same same corrupt party, but different names. They belong to the same groups. And um, of course, there's a big dominant group, big militia dominant group in Lebanon that's controlling uh, sure. everything else. Uh, sure, I, know, you know, I know what you mean. You know, you know, you mean. You know uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I just want to say we're coming close to the time, uh, the, the official ending time, is, if you like. I'd love to spend a few minutes praying with these guys, and then if we have uh, if we have any more questions, uh, you know, you're welcome to stay on the chat for a little while. Uh, I want to be mindful that these guys need to get to bed soon. It's very late over there, but uh, um, but yeah, why don't we a couple of us just pray for the for Ziad and for Tony and for uh, ministry in general in Lebanon? Anyone want to step up and pray? Yeah, Dan, can I mention uh, the in the messages in the chat, Susan shared with everyone about uh, um, ministries going on with their church. So just for people to be able to read them when they can. Yeah. So anyone willing to start us off in prayer? Yes, I will. Thank you. Lord, our, we, we know that you are sovereign and you are in control of all things. And Lord, nothing slips your attention. And uh, what we hear is happening in Lebanon. You know fully well all about it. And we do rejoice that the kingdom is being built, that, that uh, ground is being taken for the sake of the kingdom. People are coming to Christ, and but we cry out, too, at the same time, Lord, for our brothers and sisters that are struggling, and for the whole country, that you would uh, 
uh, just uh, touch the appropriate people to send the medical supplies, send the food, send the help, the money. Churches in America would partner, partner with the churches in Lebanon. Lord, we, we pray that you would uh, help to equip our brothers and sisters there that are on the ground. And uh, we thank you for them and just put a hedge of protection around our brothers and sisters serving there, Lord. And Lord, uh, we, uh, we know that uh, this will all end someday. But in the meantime, Lord, uh, please help. Please help. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Father, thank you so much for Tony's connection to Horizons through Homer. We never know when we're going to be used to, to just have um, a real pivotal um, connection for the kingdom. I thank you for the work that he's able to do there um, in Dur. Um, I pray your anointing to continue on him. I thank you for his good relationship that he's building, especially with the city manager. And um, Lord, I thank you that the clinic is able to stay open. I've been hearing about the needs that Horizons is really trying to recruit medicines for this clinic. And it's wonderful to hear firsthand how all that fits together and to get to meet Tony in person through Zoom like this. So I just thank you so much for these roundtable discussions that technology can bring us all together so closely. Thank you for Ziad and the way you've brought him into the Horizons family and the, and I pray your blessing on his church, on his family, on the logistics of, of going back and forth across the ocean so much to, to do, to really be living in two places. So um, give his family and his marriage um, and his church a real grace and, um, and help him to get real traction in his new role with Horizons. We thank you that, that he is an answer to our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for, uh, for Ziad, for Tony, and for Imad and the, and, and the many others across Lebanon uh, who are serving you. Father, we're so grateful for the exciting stories that are coming through about lives being transformed. And we, we really don't even have time to speak about them. There's so, so many good stories, Lord. But Father, thank you for the sound of hearts changing, hearts softening, hard hearts becoming soft, that the spiritual openness, the, the shaping uh, of an entire nation, Father, you are transforming not just individual lives, but you're transforming the entire backdrop for your kingdom. And Father, we ask that you would bless our brothers and sisters in Lebanon, uh, as they serve you, we ask that you would strengthen them and equip them out of the glorious riches that are stored up in the heavens in Christ Jesus. That, Father, you would supply every need, uh, not just the physical, but the emotional and the spiritual. That, Father, you would just empower them. Father, sustain them. Father, we pray over them that you will be their shield and the lifter of their heads. And, Father, we thank you for the, all you are doing in, in Lebanon and, and beyond. But, Father, you are so, so good. And thank you for these brothers who've been able to share their story with us tonight lord and um, so grateful for all that they're doing and for sharing their hearts and their challenges with us tonight in jesus name we pray amen, amen. well guys we're, we're on top of the hour so uh, i want you know for anyone who needs to go uh you're you're free to go uh, officially um i'm sure the brothers will uh, will be happy to stay and, and talk a little while longer but if you have any more questions you know we're, we're we're officially done but i'll leave the chat open for a few more minutes if uh, if we want to chat, so sure, I'm, I'm I'm alive. I can hear you. Tony <laughs> and Ziad, thank you so much for for making time, especially at one a.m. I'm not sure I would have the same staying power. You're both you're both legends. We're so excited to share what God is doing here, truly, because it's just I wish I could just go on with thousands of people and just share with it because share with them because truly, it's just amazing what's really happening in Lebanon. People are heart is being softened and uh, the, the gospel is being spread so uh, continue praying for us yeah and hopefully we can have you back sometime we can do this again and maybe not so late i don't know no anytime tony have you met um brian brian with combat team or have you heard about combat team oh Okay, they have a martial arts ministry that they have, they start little schools, they just go to, to different countries, and um, they recruit local ministries to send kids and just street ministry, and then they teach these kids martial arts from a real Christian perspective, it's all tied in with scripture, 
And wow. Pierre was pretty excited. And um, so Brian Bryan had gone to our church. I, I know him through that. We've been there through the Engaging Islam curriculum together in his living room with his wife and um, some other people. But anyway, there's just a lot of connections there. And if you could somehow meet him, uh, I'm not sure when he's going to be there next, but if but you could tell Pierre if you were interested sure. in connecting with him the next time he's there. Yeah, yeah. Pray for those two coming events. We have one in uh, July 23rd. Uh, okay. It's the same as last year. We're going to have more jumpers this year. And we will have another event. It's actually in one of the resort club uh, here and where they're all non-believers. Uh, and all of their children is uh, wealthy children going there. So we're going to take them a clown and stuff. And we're going to start talking about Jesus also. So pray for those two events coming up soon. Yes, we will. Thank you. Tony, I had one more question. Um, the churches here in America that we're familiar with are really suffering from just a lot of entertainment, lack of uh, uh, hunger for God's word. Yeah. What are the churches there? Are, are the churches there being revived with all these needs? Um, oh, yeah. You feel like there's a more unity among denominations and more revival and a hunger for God's word among the Christians? Well, I, I started seeing more people going to church these days. And the relationship between pastors, it's always, you, you know, I mean, every, I mean, if you're talking uh, Baptist and different, I mean, kind of churches, uh, there's always this clashes between them. But uh, the good thing about Horizons is that it's a mix of so many uh, backgrounds. And uh, what really reunited is not what's, what's your thoughts, it's Jesus. Is yeah. tell people about the gospel, tell people about salvation. It's you're saved if you just believe in Jesus. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, this is what's all about. And I pray truly that this kind of uh, weird mentality that Satan's been using between the pastors to be removed. Because if we can do it in Horizon, why don't we in the church be able to do it? We sit down every Wednesday morning and we pray together at nine o'clock. And each one of us is, belongs to a different church that has a different pastor. And there's a Kurdi uh, church, there's a <laughs> Syrian church, there's a, and there's like Baptist, there's so many, I mean, it's a mix. And we're still worshiping the same song, we're saying the same songs, worshiping the same Lord, so. It's God. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. What you're doing. We're excited. Yes. Thank you for joining and giving the time to listen. Yeah. It's exciting uh, to feel it's like it's like we need some we need somebody to pat our back truly we really miss it we really need that in lebanon here unfortunately everybody's battling with another person just because they can barely survive but also we need that not only the financial support and the prayer support believe me one nice word means a lot to us mm -hmm. spending time with us like this hours means a lot to us yeah um tony one last thing how um could we, as a family, contact you? Is there? Do you guys have it? You have an email or something where? Um, you yeah, know? you can. You can always email me. Uh, ask you for prayers and stuff. But you can also. Uh, I will. I will share. I think I can share it here. I can share my yeah. email. Dan has our contacts. Also, <laughs> Dan is the communication uh, uh, officer, so he has our contacts. Yeah, Who you does? can always. Get it from him, yes. Following and everything. So. Yeah. Just posting the uh, Tony has his email there. Oh, thank you. I see it. Yeah, okay. the connect is kind of a catch all for anyone who wants to know anything. So, if you have questions about yes. sending support to these guys or supporting an, an individual ministry, or if you have questions or want to get in touch with somebody, uh, just throw us an email and I'll be the guy responsible for making sure that it happens. So, if, it, if it's late, you can, you can uh, tell me off. But uh, so that that's a great way to to connect, and uh, we'll we'll direct you to wherever you need to be, or the best person to speak to, or put you in touch with someone specifically if you need. Um, uh, so uh, love you guys. Yeah, just want to quickly respond. I want this question too, Dan. I'm uh, sorry, I only just noticed this and we're almost done. But you asked about the farm project in Zahe in the Bekaa Valley, um, as. As far as I'm aware, we're about to, uh, I think the 
the, we, we allowed the previous farmer to kind of uh, wrap up his operations there. So uh, he's just about to uh, harvest his onion crop. And then uh, we kind of take over fully then at, at that point. So we're getting very close to, uh, to moving on in that project. And yeah, that we're still some things in development. It's been a little slower than we'd hoped, but uh, we were happy to let the, the previous farmer kind of finish his, his work, especially because we, we were able to get the land for such a good price. God really opened the door there. So we're, you know, but we'll, we'll hopefully be reporting on that soon. And I can tell you now that our next uh, round table should be in August. And at the moment it's slated to be on the farm project. So look out for that update. And I will put everything, uh, all these links and everything else in the follow-up email you should receive on Friday or Monday. Uh, you should get an email with uh, all the links and some updates and you know everything you need in there. So um, thank you. Uh, to Tony and Ziad and Dan, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for staying up late, guys. Yeah. I have a connection with Lebanon, with uh, George Husney himself, going back to his college days. So I, I thank the Lord for what you're doing. A question I have is, in the area of medicines, uh, are there particular medications or instruments that are more needed than others? I think there's from what uh, I've been seeing. I'm sorry, go ahead, Zia. Oh, um, yeah, we, uh, we recently did like a survey. Uh, we, uh, Horizons sent a form to churches to uh, fill out, you know, what are, the, what are the most needs? So all churches that are connected with Horizons, more than 120 churches. So they all filled out these forms and Horizons did like a statistics on most of these and they made, uh, you know, like a basic list. So they they have that so through connect at horizonsinternational.org they they have those and they can they can provide you with with uh, the with thank us. you Shukran. and uh jason i just saw your message too about uh helping with the farming project uh sounds like a great conversation um if you want to throw us an email um or uh you can yeah, that'd be, be great to hear more. We can set up a call. I'd uh, love to hear more about your experience in aquaponics. That's something I had a, an interest in a while back too. So Definitely. I'll send you a uh, direct message with my email. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, could you put up that uh, email address again, please? The connect one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's right there, but I'll put it up one more time. And yeah, there it is. Thank, thank you. No worries. No worries at all. Let me uh, put this message in so I don't lose it. Um, okay. Any uh, any other questions or, or comments, or should we should we let these guys go and get some rest? I'm actually happy with the meeting going on because usually our electricity goes off between midnight and one a.m. and now it's uh, after 2 a.m. and the electricity is still on. So this is a miracle. Never <laughs> happened before. <laughs> so you guys can go. I'm going to keep the Zoom open. Dan, you're going to have to stay. <laughs> I, uh, I thought this was an incredibly good flashlight you had working in the dark. So... No, actually, it's not. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> it should be dark on my side, but yeah, that, that's different tonight, so. That's a miracle. You guys pray then. Praise Thank God. You Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And uh, good evening. Yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah. Okay. Thanks all. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Bye bye. bye.